Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. This is going to be my review on the GameSir X2 Type-C mobile gaming controller. There are There is a bit of controversy regarding this controller. Uh, initially, GameSir was looking to tie this together with a Nintendo emulator, but it was later discovered that it was repackaged a repackaged Yuzu emulator, um, much like how Damon PS2 was repackaged PCSX2 emulator. Uh, I will touch base on that later on. I have demo of me playing games on this, and I have some, I have some opinions on it. Ultimately, I think it's not worth it to enter into buying this phone for that Switch emulator because I don't know how long they're going to keep updating it, keep ripping off whatever Yuzu has, and then uh, it's just uh, looking at the compatibility list. There's some words in that, and I will talk about that in a little bit. Initially, this review is going to be talking about the build quality, how it feels, and uh, my opinions on that of these four bullet points that they have here the pro grip that they have here i'm going to talk about that when we talk a look at the build quality this one click screenshot is pretty neat because this actually triggers an android screenshot so it's independent of any type of app that you're using and just will kind of make the android screenshot go off so that's one neat feature about this kind of switch clone that they have here on top of that, it is USB-C connected, so there is no battery, there's no Bluetooth, and that is typically my preferred method. Um, this is how it opens inside here. On the back, they have basically a warranty manual and a sticker. If I were into stickers, that is a pretty cool sticker, but I'm not a sticker person, but I can appreciate it. Put that on the side. Here is the business end of the device itself, and then there's pretty much nothing else in there. So now the first part of this review, let's go ahead and talk about the build quality and my feelings on that. We're going to kind of touch base on that. Now, obviously, let's just get this out of the way. The GameStar X2 is largely mimicking the Nintendo Switch controller. We don't need the Switch here, so let me go ahead and just take out the Joy-Cons here. Put the Switch on the side. So now if we match these two up right here, we can see that the button placement and the analog sticks pretty much line up. The only difference is, is that we have a little bit more length here. Now, this is kind of interesting to me because one thing that I want to, um, like we can take a look at the thickness. Obviously, anyone that has used a Switch before can uh, talk about that as well. The one thing that I really do find interesting here, as, as a baseline, just so that everyone kind of understands where I'm coming from, the Sony PS Vita, the Nintendo 3DS, the new 3DS, those portables do cramp my hands. I have average sized hands. I don't have large or small hands. I feel like they're average, maybe on the small side, but I typically find my hand size to be average. One thing that I've always attributed to hand cramping, especially when you look at grips for the PS Vita or the Nintendo 3DS, is that it does have this contour to it, but you also have thickness, right? This device is a bit thicker than a Switch Joy-Con, but it is not as tall. And I was getting cramps on this, and I've never once had a cramp on the Switch. So there's one thing that I never really thought about as being necessary, but the length of the controller actually is pretty important. Um, for me to not get cramps, I have to put this corner right in the palm of my hand and hold it like this. Only then will my hand not cramp, but it's a little bit too crowded, especially for my right thumb. So I have to kind of flex my hand and I'm putting it in such a way that it is um, constraining my hand in that even in 30 minutes, I can feel I can feel my thumb, I can feel parts of my, my hand starting to just get constrained from constantly being forced into a specific direction, especially with this D-pad. It is unfortunate that they've gone with a split D-pad here. I'll show off a little bit of gameplay demo here um, showing off. Just trying to do any type of fireball movement. Any type of fighting game really doesn't come off well. I, I, they are using this controller, obviously, to mimic the Nintendo Switch, especially for the Switch emulator. It was prob It's ill-advised that they went for this i i would have especially for like a generic controller at, because it also works for other things that we're going to touch base on here so um the d-pad i'm not a fan of in terms of a generalized controller because we're going to be playing a lot of other games and 
2D games and emulated games, having this split D-pad is not the best. And using it, I am in this type of arrangement. Um, I'm either like this or I'm like this. And either one of these cases, I find myself having that long switch really does make a difference because you can actually just reposition your thumb on an actual switch to be further your hand further down to use the d-pad whereas this you there is nothing to grab onto uh so uh, that is one thing that i would say is that if you have large hands you're probably not going to like this device if you have average size hands i would wager that your hands are going to cramp if you have small hands this is probably a good device for you uh, having small hands, I don't think that I think your button, your hand placement will be fine. So that is one thing that I would say right off the bat is that this device is more aimed for people with small hands. Uh, analog stick and all the other stuff, we're going to actually talk about that real quick. The uh, very minimal dead zone, accurate uh, analog in terms of where it is in relation to what's going on with diagnostic reporting back. I have had no real particular issue with it. It's the tension of it is pretty good all around it's really nice and i also really like just the small details of the color scheme to kind of adopt the neon blue and red of the switch but inside of the analog stick that's actually a really nice touch overall when when this device is with the phone itself it looks pretty nice uh, and also there are you know again copying the switch these are not analog l2 r2 they are just digital only so they are on and off they're not analog control so a few misses here overall build quality wise it is really good the one thing that i do really want to point out though and you can see that this is a pretty elongated usb-c port and it does have some flex unfortunately even with so my phone i have a oneplus 7 pro and this is my phone here I am currently right now, I am not using a case on it because this is my case. So very quickly, let's go ahead and just put that my case back into the phone. Okay. So you can see that it really didn't add much. This is a pretty, uh, pretty low profile right. case. So if we take a look at the case and the extension of where the USB-C port is, it really isn't that much more that we're extending past, right? So we're maybe, maybe two millimeters, maybe a millimeter or two. However, even with this kind of low profile case and the, the phone itself does still support it, you would see this kind of turn on right now. With this case on, it doesn't actually make connection on here. So unfortunately, it seems like that if you're going to be using this device, your phone really can't have a case on it. So let's go ahead and just take this off real quick. All right, so this is my phone. OK, so now that this is connected without a case, you can clearly see that this is blue. When you actually use the Nintendo Switch emulator, this actually turns green. So um, obviously, this. Again, the Switch emulator that is for Android only supports this case at the moment. One of the nice things that's about this device is that when it is positioned in here, it is pretty good. Like in terms of holding the device, if you drop the device, it will come ejecting out like no one's business, obviously. So don't go ahead and drop it. The one thing that I do want to make note of here is that this USB-C pass-through right here will only pass through power if you pass through a dongle this does not work unfortunately this will only pass through power so that is one negative to this particular build that i can outright say as objectively as possible at this point we're gonna that's pretty much the build quality overall input methods that i could think about we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how it works with some emulators and how easy it is to set up uh, and then we'll have the conclusion of my review Okay, now that we're in some gameplay here, we can kind of get a better idea. So Super Mario RPG kind of does flex us in a way because of the isometric viewpoint of the game, where we have to, obviously the analog stick doesn't work right now, because by default, this controls just work as they should. So all of the analog sticks are mapping correctly as they should within RetroArch, and the D-pad is, but and obviously 
you know, Super Mario RPG only works with a D-pad. But the, the thing that I wanted to highlight here more was how I have to use the D-pad. And it kind of just to highlight a few things here. Number one is that while this device does look really nice with it in here, but in practice, you really do need tiny hands to use this comfortably. The thickness of the device isn't really ideal. Okay. RetroArc works without anything needing to be configured. It's just kind of plug and play. So if we go ahead and close that, we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, Xbox Live, Xbox Cloud. All right, so here we are using the Gamester X2 on Microsoft's xCloud, which is now available included for free. Well, for free. It's included with Game Pass Ultimate now. So I just thought I would show that off actually running. Uh, what is a little interesting here, again, it's plug and play. I'm not doing anything to get this to run. I literally just connected the controller and fired up the app, and everything is working. The only thing to be mindful of here is that uh, Nintendo uh, face button mapping is reversed or inverted of how it should be so this would normally be jump but because a is here and it's still a pressing a actually jumps in the game so just be mindful that the button mapping here is correct but to play xbox style games it will feel it'll feel the weird is on the other side of this battlefield for the Kraken. The Covenant are trying to use it to break the Promethean lines. I'd rather not get stuck between them. Okay. So, here is the last demo. And again, it's worth pointing out that no setup needed to be done. I literally just connected the controller and just started playing. The last part of this review that we're going to talk about is with regard to the Nintendo Switch emulator, which is now called Egg NS, and GameSir is now distancing themselves away from a bit. But it is obviously only compatible with the GameSir X2 controller. I will show a little bit of performance. Uh, I will show the compatibility list. The, the current compatibility list is about 200 deep. Most of them are labeled as great. Uh, I'm not really sure how they're getting that moniker. I don't know if they just went past the menu and played for a bit and took a look at FPS and just slapped great onto it. It's unknown if the entire game will be playable. It's unknown if you won't have crashes. In my particular instance, I played Hollow Knight a little bit and it crashed and it's labeled as great compatibility. So, yeah, there are 200 games that have been tested out of thousands of Switch games. So, you don't have the full breadth of games that are available to you. The system requirements are extremely high. In this particular instance, I'm using a Samsung Note 10 phone, uh, which does play games reasonably well. However, most all 3D games are broken and don't work. Uh, additionally, the... Egg NS emulator seems to be closed off and is largely based on Yuzu itself, uh, so there's implications towards that. I am purposely using the Egg NS emulator on a different phone than my normal phone just because I was not really super cool with having that emulator be on my phone. It's a bit gross that you need to create an account just to begin to use it. Uh, and whatever else that they could possibly be gleaning information from it, I decided that I just wanted to have it on a phone that was not my own. Went to a local phone repair shop to see if I could borrow a phone real quick, and they let me get a Galaxy Note 10. You can see it's a little damage up there. The three games that I demoed were Hollow Knight, Golf Story, and Kirby. There, I also tried Luigi's Mansion, but Luigi's Mansion crashes instantly right after the menu, so... Pretty much the compatibility list is all that you have. It's unknown how far they will continue updating this when it is based off of Yuzu itself or if they'll fork it and go completely on their own uh, with updates. The bottom line is that, yeah, there are some Nintendo Switch games that you can play in this emulator to varying degrees. There, You will have crashes. Some things may not even work right. You may not be able to complete a fair amount of games that are listed as great. 
ultimately, I really can't see the value of this particular switch emulator that's tied exclusively to this controller. If you are thinking about getting this controller for the Nintendo Switch emulator, I would highly advise against it. Instead, what I would really like you to do is to kind of look at the controller itself and what it offers. All right, so to conclude this review of the GameSir X2, can I recommend this device? Largely, the answer is no. There are a lot of qualifying statements that I find I'm myself having to make. If you find yourself as a person that would never take off their case on their phone, uh, if you wanted to ca carry this device with you, and use it with you portably, the only way that you'll be able to do that is if your phone has no case on at all. So even if you have a slimline case like I do, it's really not going to work, So, which means that you're gonna have to pretty much always use your, use your phone raw for that to work. If you have a case on your phone all the time, then this device is not for you. If you use your device, uh, your phone, without a case, then you can start entering into this. For people with large or medium sized hands, what I would honestly recommend is to just shave off this entire part here. Don't even bother using the D-pad. It is, um, I find myself, it's extremely uncomfortable to use this. Using the analog stick, I found it to be useful, good. I had no problem using this at length and it's very comfortable. The analog stick itself is also pretty good. It's just on the top left hand side of it where there is less response and that can be seen in this particular diagram right here if we take a look at the full range of mo motion from the analog stick the top left seems to have a limited range of motion but the dead zone seems to be extremely non-existent uh, there is no cardinal snapping the tension of the analog stick itself is really nice overall i would say if you're going to be looking at this device with medium size or large hands to exclusively use the analog stick for all inputs which means that you will have to remap a fair amount of stuff to kind of just say that this is your d-pad as well as your analog stick and just shave this off if you have small hands you might be actually pretty fine otherwise your hands are probably in a cramp the construction of the device is really solid i've had no problems with that also having this usb-c uh, connector means we have no latency worries because we know that we're going to be going as fast as the wire can go versus any type of wireless interference that could be happening, powering it up, not having enough juice when you're carrying that around. There's other things to think about with that regard. Um, if you were looking at this because this is the only way to play a Nintendo Switch emulator on Android, I would highly advise against it. The cons far outweigh the pros you have to it's a closed emulator off of yuzu you have to create an account to even use it for whatever reason who knows what other information they're going to be tacking on to uh take i didn't feel comfortable putting it on my phone i really wouldn't advise putting it on a, your your phone where all you have all your information on it uh i really really can't advise getting this device so that you can play a nintendo switch emulator on your phone there's going to be limited games that play well and most of them are going to not probably be completable i would really advise just to just get a packed switch at that point ultimately you'd probably spend far less than a phone plus this accessory for just getting the switch itself in that regard so with regard to the main selling point of this device i would say no uh it is a solid controller in and of itself in that everything just works in terms of plug and play i did nothing and everything just worked including xbox cloud which if you are looking into streaming uh, support or you're an x uh, game pass ultimate subscriber and now you have x cloud this controller just does just work so that is nice and also the balance of the the phone when it's in the case is really nice how it is as opposed to being flopped over in the front you really need a heavier phone uh, heavier controller to offset the balance if the phone is top heavy which i've shown on other types of controllers so Altogether, the answer is, can I recommend this particular device? No, with some caveats. Uh, and that's basically going to be up to you to decide. Anywho, as always, guys, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.